What's going on YouTube? Hayden back. If you missed the last Fed meeting, Jerome Powell raised the Federal Reserve's benchmark interest rate by 75 basis points in its most aggressive hike since 1994. Of course, though, this came at no surprise since the most recent CPI data released that inflation for May was back at 8.6%, a level we haven't seen since 1981. Now, the federal funds rate for banks to pass overnight loans has increased to around 1.75%. And in order for the feds to fight inflation, inflation and lower consumer demand, they need to do something called quantitative tightening. This means the feds need to sell off some of their assets held on their $9 trillion balance sheet, while also simultaneously raising interest rates, as well as raising the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Remember guys, giving the like button a tap lets me know you like seeing videos like this and lets me know I should make more of them. You see, this all started when the feds needed to stimulate growth in the economy during the pandemic. The feds bought around four to six trillion dollars of treasuries and mortgage bonds, more than doubling the size of its balance sheet in just two years. This dumped tons of freshly printed money into the economy in the form of loans and stimulus checks. In simple terms, if the Fed buys bonds in the open market, it increases the money supply in the economy by swapping out bonds in exchange for cash to the general public. Conversely, if the Fed sell bonds, it decreases the money supply by removing cash from the economy in exchange for bonds. And this went exactly as planned, causing the S&P 500 to rally to more than 100% in 2021. Now, this is a good thing, right? Well, it took the market exactly 354 trading days to get there, marking the fastest bull market doubling off of bottom since World War II. Unfortunately, the feds didn't stop printing money until March of 2022, and that seems to be the problem. This means for majority of 2021, the feds continue to buy $60 billion worth of bonds every single month, allowing the S&P 500 to soar to levels that really the market has never seen before. The top five tech giants alone like Google, Amazon, Meta, Apple, and Microsoft recorded average revenue growth of 35.4% between the first three quarters of 2020 and a similar period in 2021, all while the world was under lockdown. This caused the economy to become so overinflated with all this extra money floating around that inflation started to trickle in and fast. To this day, we are still struggling with a supply chain crisis, a growing unemployment rate, and a labor shortage. And when you mix all this in with extremely high consumer demand, you're left with extremely high inflation levels. This is why the Fed is just now deploying QT. Had they have stopped printing money sooner and raised interest rates sooner, we probably would have been in a lot better shape today and inflation most likely wouldn't be as high as we have now. The problem is obviously they didn't and now they are raising interest rates and removing money from the general public with the hope to slow down consumer demand fast, stop people from spending money and lower that inflation back down. The concern now is that people think the feds took way too long to deploy this. Instead of gradually raising interest rates like they've done in the past, they're doing it relatively all at once, knocking everything off balance. In one year, groceries increased 10.1%. Fuel oil increased 106.7%. Used cars increased 16%. And even shelter like rent and housing increased 5.5%. Simply put, the middle class just can't afford this and new data proves it. The personal savings rate or the amount of disposable income that people save was just at 4.4% in April. That's the lowest rate recorded since September of 2008. And we know what happened during September of 2008. Now that 4.4% compares to 6% earlier this year and upwards of 33% in savings in April of 2020 when Americans were hoarding cash deep into the pandemic. And crazy enough, this is all happening while banks increase their APY on savings accounts, which means you can earn even more money on the cash you save. Not only that, the consumer credit card debt is heading to an all-time high. Credit card balances rose year over year, reaching $841 billion in the first three months of 2022. An additional 229 million new credit card accounts were also opened in the first quarter of 2022, basically proving that people just can't afford this ever-increasing inflation. And this is also up from the previous quarter and higher than pre-pandemic levels, which is mind-blowing. Now, this combined with auto loans, student debt, and mortgages propelled the total household debt to a record $15.84 trillion at the beginning of this year. And now, since the federal funds rate is on the rise, all consumer APY is going up too. See, what usually happens is when the feds raise the bank's interest rates, the banks then simply 
directly pass it on to their customers by raising interest offered on personal loans, mortgages, credit card interest, so on and so forth. And on that topic, credit card interest rates were just 15.78% in the middle of 2020, and now they are currently just over 16%, but may well be over 18% by the end of the year, which by the way, would be an all-time record. And sticking to the topic of increasing APY, mortgage rates just hit 6.3%, making the real cost to buy a home officially 50% more in just six months, drastically reducing the amount of home buyers. Existing home sales fell 2.4% to a seasonally adjusted adjusted annual rate of 5.61 million units just last month, the lowest level since June 2020 when sales were rebounding from the lockdown slump. This was the third straight monthly sales decline. Now even newly construction homes are getting hit hard, and trust me, I'm seeing them all over Florida. And just for reference guys, this is what new construction looks like. As of eight months ago, none of these houses were here. And for reference, if I turn around really quickly, this is what it is and all of these are being built all these new construction houses a million dollars each right next to my apartment complex for reference and they're building all of these and these are all going to be going down soon in price Unsold inventory for new houses fell 16.6% .6 in April to a 591,000 seasonally adjusted annual rate from a downwardly revised reading in March. Year to year, new home sales are down 26.9%, the lowest since lockdown in April of 2020. Both the month to month leap and the year to year leap were the largest leaps ever recorded, both in numbers of unsold houses and in percentages. But remember, these averages are national and not tailored to your specific specific community, your market can be entirely skewed, either extremely undervalued or still extremely overvalued. The April drop for new sales is a clear recession warning since housing plays a big role in GDP, which is what analysts use to determine a recession. Similar to the 2008 housing bubble, the supply of unsold new houses spiked to a historic month-to-month -month leap from a 6.9 month supply in March to a scary nine month supply in April, having nearly doubled from a year ago. Now, if you you mix that concoction with uh, already high housing prices and high construction costs and high interest rates, it's only a matter of time before the housing bubble bursts. And that's not the only inventory bubble that I'm worried about. Big consumer retailers like Walmart and Best Buy and Target Home Depot are even struggling too. Now, during the pandemic, it was a struggle to obtain inventory with the supply chain messed up. Customers even had tons of spare cash and savings, and it was very easy to to clear items off the shelves at full price. The problem now is they don't know what to do with all this extra inventory. Tons of inventory for home renovation and office supplies, which was once popular during the lockdown, are now sitting on the shelves at big retailers and even in their warehouses. It's a lot harder for customers to carelessly spend money when inflation is up 8.6%. People are finally, just finally, starting to buy less unnecessary stuff. Walmart had 32% more inventory year over year. Target was higher by 43%, and Abercrombie & Fitch's inventory was up 45% year over year, and these are just to name a few. For the first time in five months, US retail sales fell for the first time, and I have a feeling this is just the beginning. Sales at U.S. retailers fell 0.3% in May, the first decline since the end of 2021. And this is not good news for companies like Walmart who have increased their inventory to record levels. Like, look at this chart. Walmart increased their sitting inventory from 41 billion in August 2020 to 57 billion in October of 2021 to now a record high of 61 billion in April of this year. Target did the same exact thing, practically doubling inventory from 8.5 billion in April 2020 to 15 billion in April of this year, just two years apart. And all this is happening while retail sales are starting to fall and even Kohl's increased inventory by 40%. And now that I'm getting carried away, even Dick's increased their inventory to record highs while their sales are starting to fall. With the massive supply of inventory eating into profits, tons of items will begin to go on sale like TVs, furniture, and kitchen appliances to make room for travel items and toys as consumer spending interest shifts. This also means that retailers won't be purchasing as many big products from their suppliers and distributors, which could mean more layoffs down the road for these big companies. Hopefully though, all these markdowns in prices will help cool off or balance out inflation, and maybe the feds won't have to raise rates as high, but 
that's a long shot. And also with borrowing money becoming more expensive, hopefully we'll be able to get inflation back under control by the start of next year. And we'll go back to seeing a more normal economy like we once had before the pandemic. I mean, honestly, the best thing you guys can do now though is just build up your emergency fund and stockpile cash just to make sure you have some extra security for what's coming ahead and potentially be prepared to buy some discounted investments on a fire sale. Also, make sure you're not running up your credit cards as it will be more expensive and make sure to pay down any high interest loans that can fluctuate in APY. Regardless, I still feel like this all could have been avoided had we just dumped slightly less money into the economy and rose rates earlier. And honestly, I'd like to hear your guys' opinion. Was I off or do you see it differently? With that all being said, guys, definitely make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.